for when I was young, mm -hmm. we did not have the same kind of social media that we have today. We've always had social media. Conversation is social media. So people would gather under a tree and converse and all that. So it's not like we do not have any social interaction, but the medium was different. So today we have it on our phones. With just a click, anyone can access TikTok, WhatsApp, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, and a host of other social media applications, of course, on a smartphone. Defined by the Merriam-Webster Dictionary as any form of electronic communication through which users create online communities to share information, ideas, personal messages and other content, social media since its invention and introduction in 1997 has become the new trend. Now, 9 out of 10 internet users use social media according to global statistics. Data provided by the Ghana Statistical Service indicates that the country currently has a population of 30.8 million people. Out of this number, some 15.7 million are internet users. A further breakdown by Statistica.com shows that 8.2 million out of the 15.7 million are social media users. This figure represents a 2.2 million increase in January 2021 from the 6 million figure in 2020. From these figures, one thing is clear. Social media has come to stay. Social media has virtually been encoded into everyday life. Social media is now a space you cannot escape from. It's like wherever you pass, there is an element of social media, not necessarily an app, but infused in everyday life. As the new normal, social media is increasingly becoming more addictive with new apps emerging every day. But what do people use social media for? Uh, it's a platform for interaction. So I keep in touch with my friends, colleagues all over the world. I use it to um, build my vocabs. My, as you can see, I'm doing some idioms on my tablet. So it helps me to build my English, my reading. Social media, mainly I use it to communicate to my friends and get to know what's happening in the world. Most of I am with my phone and I am very much online, reading, trying to read interesting content, most, most uh, importantly, sports detail. I'm able to interact with our listeners every day, those that are contributing via WhatsApp, Twitter or, or Facebook. I make money from, from there because if, if I post snippets of interviews and jobs that I've done, I get to get reaction from people who would want to call in. So there's those whose primary source of fun is social media, and there are those who use social media platforms to gain knowledge. How much of the latter is happening? Research around the world shows there's a direct link between social media and declining reading habits across all ages, but for especially the youth category, the statistics are staggering. Considering the youth form a relatively greater percentage of social media users, this has become increasingly concerning. A study conducted on the University College London on 11,000 children tracked from their birth in 2000, for instance, found that social media could be distracting them from reading and homework, with a potential knock-on effect on their literacy. The American Time News Service's latest figures also indicates that the number of Americans who read for pleasure each day has reduced by 30% since 2004. And in Nigeria, a 2018 study by Samson Oyeniyi Akonde and Rachel Eiranti Oyedapo of the University of Ibadan and Obafemi Awolowo University respectively 
on the impact of social media on senior high school students in Nigeria concluded that the use of social media has constituted a great havoc on the reading culture of high school students. So, I sought to find out what Ghana's situation was. Is social media having an impact on the reading habits of the youth? If it is, is this impact positive or negative? At the Koforidia Polytechnic, for instance, a study by Michael Oswe Chiao on social media usage and its impact on reading habits revealed that there is a direct linkage between time spent on social media and reading habits and that the constant use of social media leads to low reading habits. Another study by Ekia Santua Aforo at the Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology to determine the influence of social media on academic reading of students in tertiary institutions in Ghana revealed that the use of social media among some students in tertiary institutions in Ghana does not augur well for their academic performance despite many benefits it could provide. These concerns have been reiterated by some learned persons who believe times have changed considering patterns as it was in their time. Professor of Linguistics at the University of Ghana, Professor Kofi Ejekum, for instance, believes the youth today are more inclined towards getting quick information from social media than reading wide. If people are tuned to social media and they are interested in the pictorial and the video and sensational stories mm -hmm. here and there, somebody has uh, fought with a girlfriend and all those things. I'm sure if you put Chinua Achebe's book there, they will read. <laughs> Former chairman of the Ghana Writers Association, Nana Kwesi Jan Apenting, had a more practical reason for his concern. He explained how things were in the past and how they have evolved. Indeed, we read a lot um, of newspapers because newspapers came in different shapes and uh, weekend papers, magazines, they were all there. When I was young, if you search in the Trotro, everybody would have a newspaper, a magazine or a book. The fact that today you don't see those mm -hmm. and you see more everybody with their necks craned and, you know, looking at their phones and doing social media interactions would suggest to me, even anecdotally, without any scientific research, would suggest that people are reading less. Genuine Concerns but Chief Executive Officer of the Ghana Library Authority had a varying opinion. First, he said, the low reading habits of Ghanaians has been a thing that existed even before the introduction of social media. In the late 60s and early 70s, a research was done by the British Council, Ghana Library Authority and the Ministry of Education to really understand why Ghanaians are not reading. And so anybody that comes to you and tells you that, oh, Ghanaian children of today don't read, tell them that the boss of Ghana Library says that it is never true. Ghana has never been a reading nation. And even if you check our annual report from the 1950s, it was evident that our libraries were being patronized by the experts. And then he quoted figures as recorded by his institution for the past five years that indicate a rather significant increase in reading habits of children and moderate figures for the youth in recent times. The United Nations will tell you between the age of 14 to 24. So if you want to take those, the, the age bracket, yes, they, they constitute the second uh, majority of audience who patronize the library services. But the huge majority, which is about 60%, are the children. And then you could probably have, you know, about, you know, 25% being the youth, you know, people that are in the senior high schools and tertiary institutions, you know, looking for some uh, resources. Uh, so you, they fall within that bracket. And then you have the adult population that also um, comes also to use the public library space. If you look at the data 
from uh, 2016, uh, library membership across the country was 7,246. And then in 2021, library membership alone is 44,234. So that's like over 600% increase. Uh, so that's really the trend we've, rec we've recorded over the last uh, few years. So I got the views of some youth to get a first-hand picture of the situation on the ground. Are they reading? I spoke to students at the Presbyterian Boys Senior High School, Legon, and the University of Ghana. Every day, I think I should read something, a passage, an article, something, but then I do read every day. Personally, I have keen interest in history, mm. and I always want to have broad knowledge about stuff. So, for instance, anywhere I find myself, whether being in a car or whatever, anything I see around at least, I try getting a little knowledge about it. Mm. So that ushers me into liking more reading. And then, some teaching assistants at the University of Ghana who explained what they have observed has become the norm with students they teach and interact with. More people are getting addicted to social media and in, in forms that are more like music and videos, games, all, all those things like texting. But it doesn't really give people the time to, you know, I want to sit down, go through a book, unless of course they make like a conscious effort, a deliberate effort to say that, okay, I want to take this, this time to read. What we, we see as, as teachers, I should say that, um, only, only course materials that are required of them mm. that we see them trying to get knowledge from. But to actually go the extent of um, reading those things online, it is very difficult. Unless maybe they want to seek more knowledge to do an assignment, um, these IAs you are talking about, unless maybe there are websites that they have to go to to tap knowledge and then use that idea to answer those questions. But for a general view or for their personal use, mm. that they are going on social media to read things that that's educative, uh, you don't see often. I probed more to answer this question. Why is social media becoming more popular among the youth? Social media has something that it connects to my habit of reading. Okay. If you ask me why I read, I'll tell you it's more about curiosity. I'm a very curious person. So every now and then I keep asking myself questions. And I find the intersection of social media and reading as a means to answer those questions. Mm -hmm. So sometimes I would see something in the news and it would trigger an interest to go and read about it. And that's one way to look at it. It's fun. There, it's it's it's, it's an experience. Social media is, is life. It's just become a culture that has basically come to stay. We're all, we're all accustomed to using social media. Everybody is okay with using social media. And the thing with social media is social media doesn't have boundaries. There's no language barrier, um, unlike with books. So that's, everybody finds it more easier, feels comfortable, feels like themselves on social media people's experiences, getting to interact with people everywhere. Um, social media is fun. It's like having a party alone. A visit to the Accra Central Library revealed more. Ordinarily, the library is a place for leisure reading, academic reading, a place for acquiring knowledge and referencing. But librarians at the Accra Library, Ghana's oldest library, told us Though patronage is high on the part of children, the facility is gradually becoming a place for referencing and academic reading for the youth. We have the SHS class. They come to basic, always use our academic books. And we also have the adult class. Uh, I would term them as the working class. They come to almost, they usually use our history uh, collection and then also the fiction collection. That's what the adults group, that's the working class, they come to, they, the books that they come to use. For the SHS group, they don't really come here to read outside the academic um, uh, category. It, so that, uh, mostly the ladies, 
they sometimes come and then they will see them reading the, some of the friction books. So sometimes you, you will get some of the SHS females reading friction books, but on a scale of 10, over 6.5, they will come for academic books. These students who were visiting the library told us why they were there. I come here to study. I read storybooks and other things, novels and those things. So it's helpful. I work in school at the same time, so normally I use my lunch hours to come here to, to solve some questions. Yeah, so basically to study. I love to read, but of late I don't read because I have limited time. But my social media, I would say like 4% or 3%, yeah, because combining these two, like, as I mean, so I have to use my lunch hour to come here. I don't even have the time. Yeah, so normally the little time I have, I invest them into my, um, in either reading, which I barely do of late. According to Mr. Hayford Siang, a decline in the book stock in the country's libraries contributed to a massive decline in patronage for about five years till 2016 when there was a revamp and subsequently a translating increase in patronage. In 1981, uh, Ghana had uh, about 36 uh, public libraries across the country and guess the number of books that was on the shelves of public libraries. Can you guess? We had 1,049,526 books on the shelves of these 36 libraries across the country. Fast forward into 2016, we had increased the number of libraries to 61. Guess the number of books on the shelves of public libraries in the country? 349,941. <laughs> does it sound some, does it ring a bell? Yeah. A very significant drop. So that is why over the years you will probably have heard Ghanaian children are not reading. You know, we don't see about libraries. It's because the shelves of public libraries in the country were empty. So if you send your child to the library space and they don't find the resources there, the diary of the wind pickets, they are not on the shelves. Now all the children they are reading the diary of the wind picket. If a child goes to the library and they don't find it, on the shelves, do you think they will be motivated to go to the library again? No. Now, over the past four years, we've increased the number of books now to 1,195,000 uh, 1, uh, books on the shelves of uh, public libraries. And that is why you've also seen a corresponding increase in the number of people that visit. That's one way to look at it. But now, there are electronic books which are accessible on many social media platforms. It is for this reason Mr. Xiao argues that social media, contrary to assertions that it is increasing the trend of lazy reading, has rather made reading much easier and access to learning materials more stress-free. I strongly believe that social media has amplified and has also helped to increase the level of reading of our citizens. Because in those days, consumption of text now through electronic devices is, is, is high and information is rapidly evolving and is moving at a faster pace than never before. And I think our citizens are getting preoccupied with reading this text or consuming these text resources from electronic devices. Don't assume that because they don't sit to pick a book from the shelf and read, they are not building a lifestyle of reading or they are not consuming information. The question we have to ask is that are our citizens consuming the relevant materials? That should be the question. Are the content that they are consuming through social media is this something that is bringing value to them? So I think it's about the period because it, is, it cannot be the case also that those who did not have the destruction of social media proved to be better readers, more intelligent people. It may not be the case because today, a lot more young people have access to information far more than the, el the older generation could ever get. That is also because of access. So it's, it, I think it's a time thing. And if you were born in this period, this generation, 
as a student, any other thing, you would really learn the ropes of how to still deliver and fulfill your responsibilities, duties as someone who is integrated into the social media culture and also as someone who is a student who loves reading and all of that. So there's room for all of that. I mean, these days, if you take, I mean, iPads, mobile phones, people have files, I mean, tons of reading materials on, on, on those platforms. There are people who find it very difficult, for me personally, apart from maybe philosophy books, because there's something with the nature of those books, how old they are, and it's, it feels nice when you are reading them physically like that. Otherwise, given the option, I would always choose a soft copy over a hard copy. Nana Kwesi Jan a painting disagrees to some extent. Yes, social media is a good place to read, but distraction on this platform is inevitable, particularly with the abundance of apps. I'm not saying people should only read um, hard mm -hmm. copy. Yeah. They can read, but they don't. And the reason we don't, not even they, we, we all don't read yeah. as much as, is because when you take a book, there's no other purpose than to read. You know, yeah. you, if you have a conversation, an internal dialogue is with a book. But this one does so many different things. Okay. So I may come and sit in this nice place with a view to read a book. But then I'll see this view and I've got a camera. Mm -hmm. So before I know, I'll become a cameraman and I'm taking pictures. It has music on it. Before I know, I'm listening to music. So if I take a book, the book is not going to play music to me. The book is not going to distract me from reading it. In fact, when I take a book, I am going to read it. Mm -hmm. It is for that reason that we advocate that even though you can read on the electronic copy, on your phones and tablets and laptops and all that, in fact, to cultivate the reading culture, mm -hmm. it is better to use hard copy books as we know, so that you form the habit. But for Joshua and Daniel, Many of the youth today have either not discovered the beneficial sides of social media as far as knowledge acquisition is concerned, or they prefer the entertainment and fun side. I believe that a lot of youth today haven't cultivated the habit of reading from their early days. And so they don't have any other option but to go where they feel they can get enjoyment. But then here's my take. They don't understand what they read most of the time, especially when it comes to pertinent issues that affect our daily living. And so they just go there for entertainment purposes without actually getting the benefits one can obtain from the usage of social media. For people who are very much interested in reading and very much aware of the fact that the world is changing, they have to keep up with global trends, I think these people would want to capitalize on social media to augment their knowledge base. But for those who um, they aren't even interested in reading, they feel, okay, then social media is the place that I can just go post pictures of myself, you know, do all kind of things to... Some people go to the extent of just going naked to get popular. Mm. And that's a very real issue. Daniel also mentioned the role society appears to be playing in subtly determining the focus and interest of the youth as far as social media content is concerned. He believes many young persons have become more inclined to consuming entertainment-related content because it is what society has made them believe makes more waves. We've evolved as a society and we are a reflection of the kind of society that we're living. So if you live in a society where social media is more or less like something that everyone wants to have and everyone goes there to show what they've got and everyone is like, okay, do you have a social media account? Why do you have a social media account? Very few people will tell you because I want to get information from there. But most people look at social media from the angle of popularity, going out there to show what they have and all of that. So, you know, our current society has 
a reflection on how we think about some of these things. Okay. And you realize that at the end, reading is pushed to the background. After all the views, one thing was very important, the way forward. And I got varied opinions from the experts and some youth alike. First though, these youth told me how influential their parents have been in the development of their reading habits. I picked one for my dad. My dad is getting, he's growing older, but still he, because he likes reading. And they're not, that, not him alone. With my, um, I think, was it primary two, primary three, they about. I was very dull. I was more than a, the weakest student. Mm. And I had this very teacher say, Cornelius, I always praise him anywhere I find myself that he inculcated into some of us this habit. Well, my mom uh, was a, a seamstress, what we call now, uh, I mean, in the past, we call Adieye. Growing up, I mean, she used to, my mom was not educated. And so she realized that uh, the only way she could develop her kids' words was to get them things like books. So even though she could not read, mostly when she, anytime she's coming back from a normal uh, vocation, she will bring along books, books she couldn't read. And you could imagine that sometimes she sits beside you when you're doing your homework, she has no idea what you're doing. But she says, oh, this thing, she has done this thing, she has no clue. So for me, it was more of my mom. And the solutions came one after the other. With children, give them the feel of real books. Okay. When they grow up, they would love books. And then even if they have to add books electronically and all that, they would already want to acquire knowledge and information through books. A book is a whole phenomenon. Mm -hmm. It is not just you go online and um, Yabroni and um, <laughs> the latest uh, gossip thing, you know. We all like gossip. We all read <laughs> a bit of gossip, you know. And um, Efria Schwarzenegger has said this and that. Mm -hmm. But those are not books. So people are reading, but we want them to cultivate the habit of reading a book from beginning to the end, challenging themselves to acquire their knowledge and information in that systematic way. In, in leveraging social media, people can, this, can follow very strategic people in society, not necessarily in Ghana, but what ideally you wouldn't have gotten on a silver platter. I told the a gentleman not too long ago that I skip all Ghanaian content on TikTok. It sounds a bit discriminatory, but I told him I, I didn't care because they were not adding any value. And the algorithm is so intelligent that it has realized that I, I really don't enjoy Ghanaian content because it's all kinds of things. People displaying all kinds of things I cannot say on record. But when you follow some other platforms on the same TikTok, people are teaching you how to use Excel. People are teaching you how your laptop works. Social media will provide you with that uh, space where either to what you would have struggled to mobilize, it presents it to you on a silver platter. But then of course you know you must know how to harness that plethora of what energy that is given to you on that uh, uh, mere foot. Ghana's literacy rate according to statistica.com grew by a massive 21% from the 57.9% figure in 2000 to 79.4% in 2018. Is this reflective of the general reading habits of the youth? What can be done?